Scott, you got a bit of a result of Barrowby without sort of several players then, so are things improving in that area or is it still quite a, a, a challenge to, to get 18 together at this point? Uh, still a challenge. Um, yes, but Villeneuve's gone through the camp, um, so each day, like I said before, each day has painted a different picture. Some, some have come in and trained and some have, we've tried to keep away. I think it's important we keep them away from the group so it's not spread. Um, so yeah, still a little bit of uh, illness through the camp, but I'm hoping that come uh, come kick off on on Boxing Day we'll be ready. Um, have you got anyone you can definitely say is back and training regularly? Um, ben Gladwin's been training um, regularly, so um, Sadu Khan's been training. Um, so yeah, them two have been added to the group um, from where he was last week. And given these sort of absences and how random they are, how easy is it to try and work on on specific things in training, like patterns of play, when, when I guess you've got half a team? Isn't it? Yeah, difficult, obviously, um, but we've still done the work anyway, um, and we'll be uh, we'll be continuing that up until um, up until Boxing Day. So yeah, it has been difficult, but a challenge. But we, you know, we've we've still done the work, and we've still uh, made sure that. Um, the players that will be included in the in the squad will, you know, come kick off. Will have all the information they need. And has Barrow given you a little bit of, sort of extra faith? I don't know, one or two squad members having had so many out and seen others come in and put in that sort of performance. <laughs> no, no, I don't think so because I think I had faith in them anyway. I think that's why you know we've always, you know, we've had a big squad from from the word go, and I've always believed in the players within that squad. You know, I think that we're. More than capable of having three or four missing, and 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 pick a team that are capable of winning uh, at this level of football, you know. So I don't think I've kind of learnt anything from that. I think that I've always believed in them players anyway. Um, can I ask you a bit about Tommy Adler? I wouldn't normally sort of delve into player just because he's had a miss at the end, but it, it looked afterwards that he was sort of, you know clearly quite upset about that. And so how how has he sort of been within himself, and how do you? Assess where where sort of he is and his game. Well, he's been fine, you know. No no forward likes to miss chances like that, you know. I thought he did really well when he come on. I thought he, he put himself in a really good position. I thought he actually did the the hard bit really well, you know. I thought the, the easy bit that uh, was to put it in the net, you know. I thought that, that obviously he didn't do so well, but he'll be fine from that, you know. Good strikers miss chances, and you know he's he'll be fine from that. He's uh, he's currently in a position where. Um, he's coming on the pitch and he's made impacts in some of the games, um, you know. And I think that it's difficult when you're only kind of getting 10 minutes here and 20 minutes there, and, and it's difficult. Um, I understand that, but you, you, you know, you want to make sure that the players you're putting on the pitch have a positive impact. He has done that in certain games, um, you know, and we're hopeful that that, that continues. Um. I don't know if there are any sort of parallels with, with your career and his a little bit, and that you, you spend a fair amount of time in non-league. You got your chance to play league football. Did you did you really feel sort of big pressure because you kind of came in at league football sort of slightly later? And it, it's like this might be my one hit. I've really got to try and seize it, seize every moment. Well, there's certainly no pressure on him from others. You know, we we want him to enjoy the environment, which I think he does. We want him to flourish in training, which he does. And of course, to, to uh, take that onto a onto a pitch, it's a good point you make. He's coming kind of late, um, but you know he gets all the love and care and attention that, that's needed for like every player does. You know, um, you know um, it's been difficult for him in terms of he's not had loads of game time, and I think from a striker's point of view, you, you would hope that when you put them on the pitch that they make that impact, and it's a small window of opportunity for him sometimes. And, and just generally, uh, you know, I think there were one or two fans that sort of got after a bit on social media, and then there were plenty more that came on and said, um, you know, keep your head up, the goal, the goals will come. Do you, do you talk to players about their kind of dealings with social media, how to handle it, when to, when to put the phone down, or do you kind of trust them to deal with that? Yeah, I put a lot of trust in the players to deal with it. I don't really know too much about social media myself because I'm not on it. I don't read anything. Um, you know, so that's my way of managing that. Um, you know, whether the players read stuff or not, I don't know. I think they're adult enough to, to kind of cope and deal with that themselves. Um, so kind of leave them alone with that. Um, I'm sure if there is ever any problems, I'm sure that the older players in the camp would would kind of find that out and would come to me and let me know that there's a problem. But up to now, there's not been no problem. Um, just to sort of looking ahead a bit to January, have you had any sort of definite? 
yeses about players who are already on loan that you want to keep with them? You know, the sort of season-long to start. Well, it, it's kind of an ongoing process. I think it will be up until, obviously, the window. So, you know, we're, we're constantly talking behind the scenes and, and trying to work out what the squad will look look like once the window's closed. We're, you know, we're, we're talking to um, to other players also, you know, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. Um, have you made any sort of decision about, about Kieran Brennan? Because, obviously, he didn't start playing a lot of football. He's come in and... And played more. Are you you having sort of elongated chats with Sheffield Wednesday? Are they happier about how his loan's going? Now? Well, I think his loan's going, you know, quite well now. I think it had a slow start. Um, he obviously got concussed quite early on in the campaign, and, and it left him out for a while. And then, of course, we uh, we went on a bit of a run. And he wasn't involved in that run, and it was frustrating for him. He then finds himself in the team and did really well, and has done well. Again, got ill, um, so it's been kind of a little bit stop-start. But as far as I'm concerned, you know, he's part of what we're doing moving forward. And um, I better ask, just in case, um, any sort of moves in the the Charlie Austin department because that doesn't quite go away. No, it's not going away, is it? Um, it? I think it's a difficult one because you know we've obviously got we've got targets, and um, I think it'd be. It'd be uh, not right for me to comment on one particular person. Obviously, there's a lot of speculation around Charlie and Swindon Town. Obviously, he was a legend here before. Went on and had a uh, or went on and had an unbelievable career. Um, so, you know, is he a player that we would we would want to sign? Uh, of course, if we could, we would. You know, but like, there's a lot of things that have to. You know, have to happen for that for that to happen. You know, so um, I don't want to comment further than that. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Okay. And apologies if the questions get a bit repetitive. Have you, has the club made any sort of decision on kind of pushing the button on signing Luke Kefcock because there's the the deal in place to do it? Yeah. Again, you know, it's an like ongoing um, situation. We're talking a lot behind the scenes. Um, and, and something that we we would probably be keen to do. I think that again, there's a lot has to happen. Um, but feel that he's done well, you know. Um, I think that he's he's had a few injuries of late, but while he's been on the pitch, he's always kind of given his all and, and scored, you know, some important goals for us. So um, a player that we'd be keen to try and keep. Um, do you bring players in on, on Christmas Day? Because not not every manager does. Do you do you really miss kind of? Christmas working in professional football or was it just one of those things that you, you have to sacrifice for a job that you're very passionate about? Yeah, no, it is, um, it is a difficult time um, because it's a, a real busy period over the Christmas period for footballers. We've built a schedule that we think will prepare us properly for the game, um, which doesn't bring us in on Christmas Day, um, but the schedule has allowed us to make sure that we get maximum uh, work and, and information into the players ready for, for the game on Boxing Day. Um, is it important to kind of show that trust in the players that they won't sort of abuse that and, and overindulge themselves on the, the day as well? Well, you know, I, I do trust my players. I know we've not got any real big drinkers or anything like that in the group. I know that for a fact, you know, and you, they're adults. And I think every if you used to ask every single player what, what do they want to do on, on Christmas Day, and they'll probably want to say, well, or they certainly will say that they want to stay at home with their family and enjoy their time with, with their family. You know, be working hard up, up to that point. We'll be getting as much information into them as we can. Um, like I say, come kick off on Boxing Day, we'll be ready to go. And as for all sort of them, quite a, a sort of tidy run. You played them right at the start of the season, albeit with not a, a full strength side. So what, what's the general take on facing Walsall and what they are? Well, I've got a, a really experienced manager now in Flinney, who I know really well. Um, you know what I expect of them. They haven't played for a long time, actually. I think the 2nd of December uh, was the last time they actually played, which is a long time. Um, so I'm not sure whether that's a good thing or, or a bad thing. Uh, it can work either way. Um, they're aggressive in, in the way they play you know they, they, they try and uh, step in from the back um, very aggressive um, back three that really step in and, and start off their attacks they play off the front really efficiently um, they have really good corner routines you know you can always expect from a Flinney team that they'll always have a, uh, a good corner routine whether it's the first one or 
later on in the game there's always something different so we'll have to be on our toes with that um, so yeah we were expecting a really tough game and how hopeful are you or what, what perhaps will you need to do to try and replicate especially that, that first <coughs> half you produced against Bamford well, you know, we, we work extremely hard on the training ground nearly every day on how we play, you know. We, you know, there's nothing that's changed from, from this week as, as, you know, what we worked on three, four weeks ago and, and weeks before that and weeks before that, you know. We, we, we're constantly trying to improve areas of our play. Um, of course, we've come under fire about you know, goals scored. Um, you, you know, I'd invite any fan to come down to the training ground and watch how much work we do on that side of things. You know, we we, we work extremely hard on on trying to put the ball in and that, um, and hopefully we'll we'll see some improvement on that. I suspect we're not too much taking off. Good luck. No problem.